Bubble Sort has two versions. In this video, we are going to talk about the first version, which is the inefficient version. And there's a second version, which is the optimized version of Bubble Sort. We have another video for the optimized version on this channel. You can check that one too if you want to know more about it. Imagine some people with the same height range are standing in a line in a random order in front of you and you want to line them up in a standing order of height. They all are in the same height range and you cannot sort them quickly by just a look. So how would you do that? Here is where you can use bubble sort. It's simple. With every pass that we go over the people in line, we compare the height of two persons that are next to each other. And if they stand in the wrong order, we swap them. If we do this enough times, we'll eventually get them all to stand according to height. Bubble sort is the simplest of all sorting algorithms. Bubble sort is not a kind of algorithm that we probably want to use in real world. What it does is just walk through the array and every time that it detects elements out of order, it swaps them. If we do this enough times, we'll eventually get our array to be sorted. Let's say we want to sort our array in ascending order. We start by comparing the items at index 0 and 1. If the right item is smaller than the left item, we swap them. So here we swap 6 and 1. Now we compare the items at index 1 and 2. The right item is bigger than the left item, so no need for swapping here. One more time. We compare the items at index 2 and 3. The right item is bigger than the left item, so we don't need to swap them. And one last time, we need to swap items at index 5 and 6 as 15 is bigger than 3. This was the first iteration and now the largest number is in its correct place. We need multiple iterations to fully sort the array. As we've seen, at the end of each pass, the next largest item moves to its correct position at the end of the array. This is why we call this algorithm bubble sort, because after each pass, the next largest item bubbles up and moves to its correct position. As you see, even though we know 14 and 15 are in their correct places in this iteration, we again compare those with each other, and this is the reason why this version of bubble sort is inefficient, as it can have some unnecessary comparisons. From this iteration, even though the array is fully sorted, in this version of bubble sort, the algorithm continues comparing the items, but without any swapping. Iteration 7 is the last iteration and when the algorithm returns the array as sorted. However, the array had been sorted at the end of iteration 4. Now, let's take a look at the bubble sort code. The first loop is for iterating through the array multiple times, and in each iteration, the next largest item in the array will move to its correct place. The second loop is to compare the array elements with each other. The if part is for comparing two adjacent elements. We compare the item at index j with the next item at index j plus 1. In the second loop, the j's value starts from 0 to n minus 1, and we are comparing each item with the next one. And the last part does for swapping. 
If the item at index J is bigger than the item at index J plus 1, we need to swap them using a temp variable. Before moving to the next part, just want to mention something else too. Here in the second loop, the J's value starts from 0 to n minus 1, and based on that, we are comparing each item with the next one. The J value can also start from 1 to n, but in this case, we need to compare each item with the previous item. Now let's see how bubble sort algorithm works on this array. Let's go through the first iteration. J starts from 0 and we compare the items at index J and J plus 1, which now are 0 and 1. 6 is bigger than 2, so we need to swap them. J is incremented and we compare the items at index 1 and 2. 6 is not bigger than 14, so the if condition is false and we don't need to swap the values. For the next J, we need to compare the items at index 2 and 3. 14 is not bigger than 15, the if condition is false and no need to swap the values. And the last time, j is 3 and we compare the items at index 3 and 4. 15 is bigger than 1, so we swap 15 and 1. We continue this until the last iteration. the number of required comparisons and name it TN. For this version of bubble sort, there is no worst case and best case time complexity as this version is not smart enough to differentiate between the sorted and an unsorted array and trace both in the same way. Here we need n passes and in each pass we need n minus 1 comparisons. So it runs in O of n squared or quadratic time. Unfortunately, bubble sort is slow and pretty inefficient. Each pass takes O of n time and that gives us a runtime of n squared. This algorithm gets very slow as the number of items to sort grows. Thanks for watching this video, I hope this was useful for you. If you are interested in similar content, please consider subscribing to this channel.